More garbage, madame? Yeah, I'm having an auction. <laughs> Do I look as tired as I feel? Yeah. But beneath this haggard exterior is a man gladdened by the memory of this great event. Wedding was nice, wasn't it? Oh, Ben and Laura looked great. Mm, their parents were nice, too. Our cup runneth over. Yes. And there are more cups running all over the living room carpet. <laughs> well, let it wait. One battlefield at a time. No! Sometimes retreat is the best course of action. This mess is not going to clean itself. No, but it won't go away either. Come on, let's go to dinner. After the buffet we just served? Well, you didn't have a chance to eat a single thing, and neither did I. Besides, now that we have only one child, we can afford it. What about Peter? He drove Nora home. Nancy's in bed. You know how flirting can tire a person. All right. I'll let Nancy help me clean up tomorrow. And I'm going to stay in bed. <laughs> I was very proud of you today, bride. I wasn't the bride Lori was. You'll always be my bride. <laughs> Burger City okay? No, you spendthrift. <laughs> In time, Bob. In time. <laughs> What, what would you do with my beer? A couple of your college buddies came over and chugged them all last night. There's diet soda in there. I'm not that thirsty. Did you have some of that cake they had over there? I nibbled. Hey, come here. I'm like sponge cake. The sponge is still in it. Everybody about the party raved about it. Yeah, because it was beautiful. You know, if you want my opinion, that was like the whole wedding. Everything was beautiful, but there wasn't much there, really. That's kind of encouraging, Russ, because, you know, there's not too much beautiful around here, so we must have a lot going for us, huh? Mm. Look, any iced tea left? I told you, you're not going to find anything in there. Now, get over here. Maybe I should go out and get something. You know, one of these nights, we're both going to be in the right mood at the same time, and it's going to be fireworks. You mean it's not now? Just kidding. You want something from the store? <clears throat> Russ, you haven't shut up or stood still since we got back from Lori's wedding. Becky. <laughs> What's the matter? It's not what you think, really. And that didn't bother me as much as, 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 I thought, as I thought it might. I'm serious, really, it didn't. It's your mother, isn't it? I'm looking forward to seeing her. Yeah. She's looking forward to seeing you, too. It's just this uh, third party that's going to be the uninvited one. Wine. Why, yeah, wine. That, that ought to take the edge off this thirst here. Listen, I want to go out and get something. Uh, I'm sure I can't get you something at the store. Pickles. What? Nothing. Look, I mean it. I want... What are you going to tell your mother? Mama. <laughs> I'd like you to meet the long-lost sister I never told you about. for Lori's first child? Oh, no, this is just a little sweater for Jimmy's Christmas. Mm, yeah, well, that's what he's always wanted. Oh, there'll be a bike under that tree, too. I've got all bases covered. Now, Mom, don't you indulge that boy. That's my job. <laughs> How's Samantha? Oh, she said she had a great time. You two would have a good time in a car wash. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's the being together that makes it an event. Mom, 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 she's my boss. Uh-huh. And I don't mind telling you, it's difficult talking romance one minute and pay scales the next. Uh-huh. You're talking romance. No, we're not. I said it was hard. I haven't figured out how yet. Yet? Hey, <laughs> you are impossible, Mama. Uh, Jean, why don't you let me fix your late-night snack? You gotta snack? Get it, I'm stuffed, Mom. I don't want a late-night snack. 
Hey, what is this? Oh, well, I make a little something for myself. I hey, Mom, haven't had Mom. much. You circled an ad for a house in our old neighborhood? What is oh, that? Oh, the marker must have bled through. You see, I was circling, um... Oh, Bambi's night out, huh? You thinking and taking in a dirty movie, Mama? Oh, gee. Oh, I understand that the ladies getting free at places like that. They'll... Oh, that's just, oh, mom, mom, what is this all about? All right, all right, Jane. I don't like it here. I told you that before. Oh, not this again. Mom, I thought we settled this. We settled that you didn't want to hear about it anymore. I still don't want to hear about it. Jane, would you just look out that window? This apartment complex, that brass and chrome out there. People don't live here, they exist. Oh, Mom, people don't live in the old neighborhood either. They get killed. Jane, now look at this. Now, this house is on the corner of St. Jane. You know, it's that old Victorian house. I always loved that house. Come on, Mom. I worked hard to get here. Well, you didn't have to take me along. Jane, I can't take it. The music in the elevator, a security patrol parking area or something. Why do I need all of that? Because the management wants to make sure that your car goes through the summer with all the hubcaps intact. I took care of all of that myself for 49 years in that neighborhood. I don't want you taking care for yourself, Mom. I want you to be comfortable, OK? Well, I'm not comfortable. I want to see familiar faces at the corner market. I want to be able to walk to church, have friends closer than 16 blocks away. Gosh, I'm not listening. I'm not going to yell. I'm not going to get mad. But you are not moving anywhere near that Chesterfield district of town. No way. Morning. Oh, hi. Oh, I see you've already cleaned up. Well, everything but the dishes. You came down to help me? Uh, sure. What do you want done? <laughs> Be my guest. There's not a clean dish in the house. They're all here. How am I supposed to eat breakfast? Well, you point out and you just scrub its little dummy. I think I'll have a donut. If I'd known you'd wanted to help, I could have slept in too and we could have done this together. From scratch. Yeah, it's late. That alarm in Laurie's room really doesn't work very well. I have it on that soft music, and as soon as it wakes me up, it lullabies me right back to sleep. I'll hook it up to Peter's 12-inch speakers tonight. Sweet, Terry. Always wanting to help. Nice party you had. Didn't know you knew so many good-looking men. I saw you flirting with all of them. Yeah, I think I got to about all of them all right. Nancy. Uh-oh. Here it comes. I, I want to have, have a talk. talk. I mean it. I'm going to need milk with these. Well, your figure will thank me. And maybe you will, too, after we've discussed your situation. I didn't know I was in a situation. Do you have any plans? Uh, well, actually, I was going to go um, get my hair done and buy a coat. Want to come with me? I meant long-range plans. Oh. Terry, dear, why don't you just change the locks? That's not going to work, Nancy. You can't make me feel guilty. We have had you here in our house and in our lives. And you've given us very little in return. Return? Is that what I am, some kind of investment? The returns I'm talking about go no further than simple gratitude and respect. But I'm not even demanding that. All I need is to know you're planning for your future. Well, I'll go to truck driving school or computer programming. What do you want from me? A straight answer for once. Well, I haven't got one. You've got a cozy little life here, a husband who takes care of everything. You're the perfect picture of domestic servitude. What has that got to do with anything? Well, you're getting on me because my life doesn't fit into your nice little pattern. I don't fit into your cozy mold. I think maybe you're just irritated, maybe just jealous. Nancy! I don't know what I'm going to be doing next week or next year. But I know what you're going to be doing, washing dishes and sorting socks. And that scares me. The issue isn't me. It's you, presuming on our hospitality, expecting free room and board just because you're too lazy to support yourself. I just got over a hellish relationship with the man. You used him for everything you could and left. I didn't mean that. 
I think that's one of the first things you've said to me that you really did mean. I am so angry I could scream. What's wrong? I don't want to talk about it. Right. I just came from a meeting with Prescott, Slaymaker, and a representative from Protochem. So they get all over your case? Forget it. I am so angry. I just don't want to think okay, about it. Okay, okay. I mean, I am caught right in the middle. They are running all over me. Sam, come on now. Get it out of your system. Oh, what do you care? You're going to be dancing off to TV land any day now where you don't have to make a stand unless the Nielsens are on your side. Oh, oh, right. And I don't see that anywhere in my job description, but I guess that's part of my work, giving you someone to unload on. I did not mean it. Okay, so what happened? Oh, come on, Gene. You saw it coming. Proto-Kim has turned into a political hot potato, except they don't throw it. They just give it to me, and I run it back and forth. What's Slaymaker say, Sam? Oh, he's got an environmental lobby that he has to answer to, and the representative is saying that the city needs more jobs, and they need greater revenue, and that this new plant will give them both. Sam, that's not your decision. Oh, quit being so naive. I mean, as soon as we finish this impact report, either side is going to take it and use it to sway the Okay, public. so we base our reports on facts, and we just turn it in. That's all and we have. And the other side says that we are being biased. Now, come on, Gene, and quit giving me all of those obvious answers. I'm trying to help. You can't. Nobody here can. It is all on me. Sam, look. If you don't mind me saying so, I think you've taken an awful lot on yourself because you're afraid to share it with others. At first, I thought you were doing it because I was inexperienced, but then I see you never delegate work to anyone else around here either. And you're just as stingy with your feelings, too. Oh, I see. Well, that is my problem. Oh, knock it off, would you? Okay, Mr. Redland. Then tell me what other glaring faults of mine you see. Hey, look, I'm telling you this for your own good, okay, Sam? The guy I was engaged to use that line. Look, you're building walls, okay? Well, honey, it is the only way that I can keep people out of my business. So what if someone else wants in? What if they want to share in the work and share in your life and stuff, huh? Why don't you just mind your own business and leave me alone? I think that's a good idea. I think that's a good idea. I'll just get out of here, too. <laughs> You know, maybe you could uh, paint the walls after you're through dusting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the more I look at this place, the more I realize how ugly it really is. Oh, it's just because your mother's coming. It's like the dorm. I remember I never knew how much a dump I lived in until Parents' Day. It's not too late, you know. What? I'll paint the walls? Shuffle me out the back door. Becky, it's going to be all right. No, it's not going to be all right. Now, when she finds out we're living together... Look, Judy Wagner always wanted me to be her roommate. I could go over there for a couple days. Becky, you can't tell me that you don't want my mom to know. Yeah, I want her to know, but she doesn't have to know yet. <clears throat> oh, all right, uh, okay. Pack a suitcase. Be sure and clear all your perfume and your makeup out of the bathroom and... Be sure to get the white bread out of the fridge, because Mom will definitely know that's not mine while you're at it. Get the okay, classical albums right, off the shelf, right, get the rose right, off the right, wall, right, and I'll tell right, my okay. Mom I have an a unhealthy, cultured, very different kind of roommate. Oh, that's not so untrue. Look, my Mom gets in at 6 o'clock, right? It's a half-hour drive from the airport. They give me plenty of time to set things up, talk to her a little bit. By the time she gets here, she'll be well-prepared. Russell, there's no way Don't to have... Don't call me Russell. All right, sit. First of all, when you tell her, make sure you're not driving over a bridge and the car door is locked. Check. Second of all, she's going to blow up no matter how, when, or where you tell her. Mm. And thirdly, she's just going to look at me like some undergrad who hears the cash drawer ring every time you talk about becoming a doctor. You said she already hates you, didn't you? Well, I'm just facing the obvious. Nothing is obvious. You don't know my mom, and you don't know what I'm going to tell her, and the fact that she wants me to get married doesn't... Nothing is obvious. She wants you to get married? Well, then what's she going to think of this living arrangement? 
Come on, it's a no-win situation. Why don't you just, I'll tell you what, I'll leave while she's here. You give her a quick tour, put her in a nice hotel, and spend your time with her there. No, I won't do it. Russ, you don't know how important it is to me that she likes me. I want to put my best foot forward, and already I'm four feet behind. She's gonna like you because she is exactly like you. Hard-working, honest, and beautiful. Trust me, Becky. I'd like to apply for a permit. Oh, what for? Well, I want to build a, an apology, a, a big one, and I need your permission. All this apology that you're applying for, do you need a partner? Yeah. Gene, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry that I yelled at you. No. Oh, uh, no, I never should have taken it so personal. Well, you had every right to. I made some pretty personal accusations. Yeah. Well, I should have overlooked it, though. Oh. Look, partner, we're not going to get this apology built unless we agree on some floor plans. Well, <laughs> I mean... Why don't we just quit trying to say things with our eyes and just come right out with it? I mean... I like you. Oh, you're beautiful, but you're timid. Oh, stop. Don't, don't stop that. Well, I like you, Jean. I like you as more than a good employee and as more than a friend. And I don't know where that puts you, but I'm hoping that you'll stay there. You think I can stay there and still leave this job? I can't decide that for you. Oh, would you try to... <sighs> That's unfair. You said that you were sorry, and it's forgotten. Jean, in this work you put on armor, right? Yeah. Especially as a woman, it's um, a defense. I mean, it's just survival. But you cannot expect me to take that armor off in just a minute. I know. You take it off piece by piece. Well, sometimes I, sometimes I think that I'm just showing you my hard side. Oh, no, that's not true at all. I, <laughs> I mean, I think you're great. I, I like you. I think you're great. <laughs> I mean, would you listen to me? Here we are talking like a couple of grade school kids. Well, when the time is right, Jane. How's it going, Jean? Fine, Deborah. Fine. Just fine. Obviously, this isn't the right time. Jean, have you decided if you're going to take Scott's job offer or not? I don't know. I'll make that decision soon. I promise. Nice to meet you. That's tacky. Hi, Mrs. Weaver. I've heard so much about you. Hi, Mrs. Weaver. Congratulations. You're a grandmother. Yeah, she'd love that. Last time a girl was so happy to see you. I can't remember. Where's Russ? He went to pick up a six-pack. 
Good time. Yeah, hey. for us, a uh, little soft light, soft music, you know what I mean. Russ gets like that sometimes. Yeah, I know when, too. Yeah, yeah, out. Out. Uh, hey, tell yeah. us to stop by, huh? Yeah, I will. All right, Hewitt, if you can handle the Kingsley front line, you can handle a little old lady. Will you jerks just leave me alone, all right? Back. Russ, why'd you knock? I want you to think those guys were barging in again. Uh, Mom? Uh, Mom, I'd like you to meet Becky Hewitt. Hi, Mrs. Weaver. I... <laughs> you know, now you heard me. I said that you jerks. It's because those guys... How's your flight? Very nice, Becky. All right, listen, Mom, I want you to come on in and have a seat. Let me take your coat. Make yourself comfortable. All right, I'll give you a grand tour of the place, but, uh, well, you can see just about all there is from right here. Yes, it's very modest. Well, I have to cut corners, you know. I've offered to send you money time and time No, again. no, no, Mom. I don't want to steal from your paychecks. Uh, we get by. I get by. Russ tells me you're still an undergraduate, Becky. Yeah. Becky, come on. Sit down and uh, get acquainted. Mom doesn't know anything about you. Yeah. Uh, I'm still an undergrad. and <laughs> I, used to, I used to model. Yeah. I sing, too. And I'm talking like I'm at an interview. <laughs> 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 well, so much for small talk. I've never been one for it, either. Life's too short. Ah, yeah, see, she's a trooper. Mom always likes to cut right through the fat. It gives me so many opportunities to do that. <laughs> you two are living together, aren't you? 